Hello everybody, welcome to Excel video 312. Today I was helping a group that was frustrated with the time and the complexity of their crystal reports. It took a long time to run and anytime they wanted to make a change they had to go back to IT and get help. We're going to replace some of those with pivot tables to make it a little more user friendly, faster and easier to change things. When you're ready to get better reporting options in your practice, I'd love to help you. We're going to wrap up our discussion to get pivot data today with just a couple of more tricks that might be helpful for you. Remember last time we wrote a formula that said, hey, if we've got multiple fields, years, and primary insurance going on, get pivot data can deal with that. Let's just drag for fun a couple of more fields in here. If you have a terrifically complicated pivot table going on and you want to do a formula like that, notice that it's just a matter of saying we're still looking at the sum of build field in a pivot table that starts at A8. Now we're just saying the primary insurance is Medicare, the location's on a copy I. The specialty is PC period. The years is 2009. You can just keep lining those up as far down into the detail of this pivot table as you need to to get exactly what you're looking for. The second thing I want to show you is that you can do this same thing on another sheet. And it's almost the same formula. It's easy to do. And the shortcut, the simple thing to do is simply to do equals and click on the formula that you or the, the cell that you want to create the formula with and hit enter and Excel will build it for you. But if you notice it's not that different. All we're doing is saying some of build from the pivot table that's on sheet two and A8. Primary insurance is Medicare location, specialty, and all that goes on. The only thing we're doing is saying, hey, the pivot table's on a different page. Other than that, you can do formulas on a separate tab. And I do it all the time. What I'll do is I'll put the pivot tables back on these back tabs over here where we do the calculations. And in the front, I'll pull numbers from multiple pivot tables to get exactly what I'm looking for, maybe on a dashboard kind of thing on the first page. So it's easy to do multiple levels of get pivot data and a real common usage for me with get pivot data is when I've got cells on a different tab, I want to make sure I'm pulling exactly what I want. Nothing changed on this pivot table three tabs back or whatever on my front page dashboard. I use get pivot data a ton for those kind of formulas on different tabs. Last thing I want to show you on get pivot data is if you're frustrated with it, you say, hey, it's too complicated, Nate, I just need it to be easier. I hardly ever use it. Can I turn it off? And the answer is yes. Here's how. If you go to the file menu or the same place options the uh, in the uh, Excel, the, the circle in 2007 in the office menu, if you go either one of those places and options, and if you go to formulas, one of the options will be get pivot data functions for pivot table references. If you turn that off, and click OK here, and we'll come back over to the pivot table. And now I want to do the formula with that same number. I've got the same thing here. It's just equals B13 instead of that complicated thing. And then you've got to build it. I leave it on. I like it. But if uh, it's frustrating for you or for whatever reason you need to turn it off for a while, that's how to do it under the op form options and formulas menu. That's what I wanted to say about get pivot data, but I'm not done talking about calculations and pivot tables. Stay tuned next time and we'll keep going with a bunch of other things that you can do. Thanks for watching.